Hi there. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can create a simple form based app on Drona HQ. To get started on your app, click on this plus icon over here. Once that is done, you'll be presented with two options. First, to pick an app from the marketplace or second, to build a new app from scratch. If you want to see how you can start with a ready app from the marketplace, we already have a video present on our channel. For this video, we are going to create a new app from scratch. For that, I will click on this button that says create new. The app that I'm going to build has to do with conference room booking. We'll quickly give a name to our app and a brief description. We'll select a simple icon for this application like this one over here and go ahead and click on add app once you click on add app you will be redirected to this app builder screen there's a lot to look at over here but i will just give you a brief overview to get you started on the left hand side you can see certain icons these will let you navigate around the various functionalities of the UI Builder. The very first one is config. Here then you can control the properties of your app, such as what it will look like on different devices or whether the user can take a screenshot or not, and so on. You can control what font your application will have, what color theme, and what the control spacing would be. Moving on, next up is screens. Over here, we get the information of how many screens are there in our application. Since we are just starting off, we only have one screen. Next up is controls. These are nothing but the UI elements that you see on your application, such as uh, filling up your name, your, the date, email address, phone number, uploading an image, looking at the map, looking at a photograph, and so on. The very first thing that we have are form controls. These are basically where the information will be getting collected. We have text, numeric, selection controls, such as drop down, radio boxes, check boxes, so on. We have two buttons, that is an action button and a submit button. I'll be talking about this shortly. Certain native controls such as geolocation, signature, uploading a file for images or documents and so on then last we have some unit controls the next element you'll be looking at are visual controls these are more representation controls where you want to show some images or you have a data and you want to represent them in the form of a graph or a pie chart and so on we have so we have certain navigation controls as well list menu or icons or in the image format you can display certain text also using the display text controls we have section break media controls you can build a table list controls like showing a menu or a list of a to-do list or number of employees in our, working on a project and so on and last up we have certain charts to represent your data for giving you that dashboard kind of a look. Rules, APIs, and sheets are something that I'll be talking about in a more advanced tutorial. We also have certain shortcuts to give you that keyboard first kind of an experience while you're creating your applications. What you see in the center of the screen is nothing but your app screen. This is essentially where you will be designing an app and what all will go inside the screen and what it will look like on your uh, mobile device or your web app and so on like we pick up control over here and click on it and it's just showing it in on your screen on the right hand side there are again properties that have to do with your overall app screen. So if I click on this empty space, I can control the header, the color theme, and change the name, the heading, subheading, icons, 
You can control the color of the body. There's the footer. We'll be looking at it in a while. And the info, basically the name that you want to give your individual screens. Since this is the first screen that I'm building, I have named it book conference room. I can later on add more screens and control the name, menu or a dashboard and so on. The rightmost one says the last timestamp when your app was saved. The one next to it says publish. This is how you move your app from a draft to a live status. Once you click on publish, you add some release notes and you can then access your app in your container app, maybe on Android, iOS or web. The green button over here is for preview. This is something that you can get a look of your app before you actually publish it, what your app might look like on different kind of devices. This button that says add to marketplace is kind of fun. This lets you add an app you built to a public repository of applications. We'll be talking about that in another video. Over here, you'll see a plus icon on workflow written. Right now, this button is not active. We will work on this once we add a submit button to our app screen. So I'm going to start building the application now. I'll get rid of this control. It's not that difficult. Just click on it and I'll see a bin over here. It's gone. But the very first thing that I want to do is get the date of this conference. After that, I'm going to head over to forms under control. Let's just go down and get the date picker. I will also need to know when the conference will be starting. And for the same, I will add a time picker here. Just click on that and get added. I'm going to change the label, what it says over here, which I can control on the properties. Just quickly change that into, I'll call it start date. Similarly, the next one will become start time. I will need one more control to get at what time the conference will be getting over. Now I can even ask the user to specify a certain kind of room that he's looking for, say a capacity of 12 people or 24 people. The room will have a projector or a television and so on. So I'll just leave a text box over here for him to specify room type. The last thing that I will add on this screen is for user to enter the name of the participants. So I will head over to forms again and select text area. Here the user can leave back the name of the people who will be attending this conference. One last thing that I'll change in this app is the name that you see over here that says main header. I want to change that. So I will just click over here or I can click on any empty space right here also. And I will be presented with these options. I'm going to click on header. Over here, I can see subheading and main heading. I'm going to remove the subheading for now. And the main header will say book conference room. I can also remove the icons. So right now, I don't need them. I'm just disable them. Same for the left icon. The app seems good to the data needs to go from this app collected somewhere. So I will add a submit button. Again, I'm going to head over to form under controls. And here you can see it says submit. I'll just click on it. And one thing that also happens when I do that is this workflow button gets activated. I'll briefly be talking about that. Oh, I'll just click on it and change the color of it. Over here. Done. Now my app seems ready to go. Uh, next thing that I need to do is add a workflow in order for the data getting collected over here to get into a sheet. 
we'll also be talking about sheets in some time. Um, so I'll just click over here on workflow. The very first thing that it will prompt us to do is update a sheet record. So it will ask us where to update it and we can either select from an existing sheet or create a new one. So since we're just beginning, I will create a new sheet and to do that, I'm going to click on this over here that says create new sheet and I will give it a sheet name, conference room. And that seems all right. Click on add sheet. I will be redirected to another page where I will be controlling what our columns are there in my sheet. Brief intro about sheets as well. This is a zone which use columnar database as a service that really makes it easy for non-technical users to handle with data elements. We can add columns of any data type and there's a lot to learn over here as well. We'll be, we'll be talking about sheets in another video. So I can see the name of the sheet says conference room, which I just gave it. It does not have any column. It only has a unique ID created by and created at. These are three default columns that every sheet will have to kind of let you map every entry going inside it. I will be adding a couple more columns for my application. So for that, I will click on plus column over here. And I can give the name as per my requirement. So the first one would be a start date. Column type, I'm going to select date clicker. Next would be start time. The column type would be time picker. Another one was end time. So over here I have added the column names and the column type that we needed for my app screen and I'm just going to click on add columns. So I can see new columns have been added and I'm going to head back to my workflow in the other tab. I can see that sheet was created successfully. I'll just click on OK. Now to begin with our workflow, I'm going to click on this plus icon over here. And click on update sheet as that is what I want for this app. Every time one submits a conference room booking, the data is to go in the sheet that I just created. So I'll click over here, give it a task name. And click on next. It will next ask me where to update the record. So I'm going to quickly look for the sheet that I just created. I can see it's already here. Conference room. I'm going to click on that. Next up, we get three options. If you want to update a record, insert record or delete a record. Since it's going to be only an insert record for every new request or every new booking that is being made, I'm going to click on insert. Next, we select which column the data will go to. So I can see that the columns that I just created, I can only find them here. Over the formula for the insert value, I'm going to enter the label names of the controls that we had added on the app screen. So start date, uh, let's see if it, okay, great. I can only see start date, great. Again, start time. It really helps when you have similar uh, control labels and column names, speeds up your work sometimes. In time, room type, and last one, participants. Great, that is done. I'm going to click on done over here. And I'm good to go with my workflow for now. I'll click on this cross over here. I can take a look at what my app would look like. So. I would be clicking on this green button for preview. Going ahead. So this is what the preview looks like. It's 
currently showing me for an iPhone 6, 7 plus device. Let's see, I want to change that to Android tablet. Okay. Kind of, let's just see what our end product might look like on different kind of devices. And if we're not okay with what the UI is looking like, we can make enhancements before we publish it. That date, it has already depopulated the device state. I can change that. Let's see. 14th is done. We change the end time. I want the room to have speakers and a projector capacity of six. Participants would be let's see John is there. Then for clients. And I'm gonna click on submit. I'm gonna publish the application. For that I'll just click on this button over here that says publish. The description of it is as simple as just a form. Form based app. And I'm going to click on publish. Once that, I can head over to the web app and take a look. I'll scroll down and I can see that conference room book has been added. I'll click on that. This is what the app looks like in the web version of it. I'm going to quickly submit some data. Uh, let's select a date, 14. So I've entered the details that I need to. I'm going to click on submit. Let's head over to sheet and see if the data actually got there. There it is. I can see the start date, in time, room type, participants. And that is done. As easy as that. This is how you will create or start building any kind of a simple form based app. So this app can further be customized to the nth order. We can add drop down for the user to take away any kind of uh, manually typing in of data. We can um, pre-populate these uh, fields based on the time that he's filling in the form. We can have another control for the end date that allows the user to block the conference room for a greater amount of um, duration or for a recurring meeting in the conference room. Uh, go ahead and do that, which we will in uh, forthcoming videos. And I would like you all to uh, stay connected and keep on watching. Thank you.